Today's podcast is brought to you in part by Sarsen Funds, real, clear, crypto, and general provision. Your daily game plan for success. It's Sacks in the Morning, Steve Sacks. Hi, Steve Sachs here with Sachs in the Morning. And this week we're talking about limits, okay? Oh, I hate that word. There should be no limits. And sometimes when it comes to achievements, our biggest enemy is naturally ourselves. Now, I saw this article on Fast Company, and it really kind of brought about some things I was thinking about. I wanted to share it with you today. This is from Jennifer Lee, who is the Director of Client Relations at Johnson & Johnson's Human Performance Institute. And she says that there are differences between the skills that we just haven't developed yet and the self-imposed limitations we place on ourselves through uncertainty and fear. Those are the two biggest reasons. But how do you know the difference between a genuine limitation – and a bogus story you're telling yourself. So you're actually fooling yourself. How do you get rid of the self-imposed boundaries and break through to a greater achievement? Well, here's a couple of examples. When your beliefs refer to an ambiguous they, there's a good sign that they're manufactured and not real. Statements like, they'll never give me a shot, or they're going to know that I'm too young or too old or too inexperienced. Those are pretty good examples. Another one that I want to highlight is to build confidence. And you begin to set small goals and action items to get you toward the accomplishment you're seeking and celebrate those small accomplishments along the way. Now, I talk a lot about that when I'm doing my speaking engagements. One of the ways that I kind of capsulize that is I call it stacking bricks. You stack bricks in a positive manner. And if you stack them the right way for long enough, you can build yourself a fortress. And I think that's a good way to build confidence because if you do this over a period of time, you can change the human dynamic. You know, your confidence becomes more effervescent, your demeanor becomes stronger, and you create that inertia of positivity. And I think that's a great way to build up that confidence. If you've mastered a new skill, you nailed down a big presentation or, or you wrote a proposal for your next promotion, you know, reward yourself and recognize the work you're doing to overcome those limitations you previously put on yourself. Celebrating the small wins is critical. Wholeheartedly, I believe this. Because even when you get to the finish line, you're going to have a new goal and new aspirations. So it may never feel like enough. And lastly, another example is to be able to learn from your losses. When you're making a move to overcome those limitations, you will likely experience a failure or two along the way. In my estimation, this is absolutely critical to be able to experience the loss, to be able to bounce against the fence and know where, where the guidelines are. Failure, not only is it critical in the sequence to becoming successful, it's one of the fastest ways of learning. Seriously. I mean, ask a toddler. When have you heard a toddler come up to his parents and say, hey, mom and dad, I can't wait someday to work my way up to middle management? No, they want to be lion tamers and ballerinas and astronauts. All those things are, are really, really important when you're having to go through that time of failure. But what's the key about this? And why do I use the, the little kid as an example? Because they don't lose their enthusiasm. The enthusiasm's there. It's always there. And that's when you've got that enthusiastic energy Soon enough, you're going to just wear something out and beat it. And that's the great thing that you see in little children. You're learning to walk, and they don't care. You know, they fall down all the time, but they get up, got a lot of enthusiasm still, right? So that's kind of the thing is if you can learn from your losses, that's a great thing. So don't be afraid to go out there and, you know, have a misstep once in a while. And that's my short for today. If you like what you heard, give us a positive review, subscribe, and share. Also, don't forget to go to our website at saxinthemorning.com if you want to get into the swag store. Hit the shop button, and uh, believe me, it's all there for you. Hats, mugs, tumblers, v-necks, visors, you name it. Go take advantage of the swag store at saxinthemorning.com. Today's podcast was brought to you by General Provision and Sarsen Funds. Sarsen Funds, real, clear, crypto. One of the more popular financial investments in the market today is cryptocurrency and blockchain. You've heard a lot about it. Bitcoin and others make the news on a regular basis. But it's a new currency and a new process that many of us don't really know or understand. And that's where Sarsen funds come in. They build your confidence with knowledge of the investment. They're a leading educator for financial advisors and consumers. I know. I personally have investments with Sarsen. 
They have a passion for cryptocurrency with a team that boasts a wealth of knowledge in the industry. More importantly, they have the resources to help us, you and me, learn about this new and exciting investment opportunity, like Cryptocurrency 101. It's yours by simply visiting the website and clicking on Education and Marketing. If you want to learn more, if you're looking to get a high-level Wall Street-grade understanding of cryptocurrency and blockchain, visit sarsenfunds.com. They've helped me understand why this is a great investment tool and to better understand what it's all about. Sarsen Funds. Real. Clear. Crypto. Crypto.